Hey guys, uh, sorry about the audio quality, my um, audio recorder is not available today, but um, I would like to talk to you about solder stencils. Practically all of my designs are close to 100% SMT, so that means it's surface mount, there are no holes to put your components through, only components are tiny things that you put onto the PCB. So there are different tiers of uh, like assembly quality, I suppose. Um, the, the very first one is, well, obviously you can just use your soldering iron and some solder wire to try to uh, assemble this kind of stuff. But this here, this is a tiny, tiny 0.5 millimeter QFN microcontroller here. So really solder wire is uh, not an option here. So the pretty much the, the easiest thing uh, that you can do without any special tools is uh, just using solder paste. It comes in these little uh, cups which have like, <laughs> uh, they're always half full when you buy them for some reason. Uh, it's like a dollar on eBay. By the way, do not use the syringes. A lot of people think it's easier to use a syringe to uh, squirt solder paste onto a um, PCB. It really isn't. First of all, these syringes are uh, very inaccurate. Uh, you squeeze quite a lot out onto your pads, and especially like here, I'm uh, basically all my passives are 0402s, and uh, all my components are these. This is a 0.5 millimeter pitch. This is a 0.4 millimeter pitch package. Uh, it just won't work. Everything will beat up, and you'd have to um, rework. By the way, those syringes they clog up after the first use. You have to like un unplug them and then it's, it's just a mess. Uh, don't even try. The recommended option is to just uh, well, obviously not use a screwdriver but take a little bit of uh, like a dab of solder paste onto uh, some kind of applicator. Uh, usually people use matchsticks and then just like apply it to a pad and especially for these kinds of pads you can just apply solder paste for the entire row in one go go over the entire board obviously this only works if you have a board like this with very few components and then when you're done uh, you place the components and use hot air to solder it so the next thing you can use is a uh, solder paste stencil and this one is already a bit dirty as you can see what I've done here is I bought mylar this really only works with mylar 0.15 millimeters thick and that's that's a plastic that uh, you can use a laser cutter to cut holes into it and then obviously you cut the holes in the places where there are uh, there are pads onto a PCB you tape it down and you basically put a whole glob of solder paste on the solder stencil and use something like a credit card to swipe it over and you remove the stencil and you've got solder paste very nicely spread onto all your pads. So here we have a close-up of the uh, paste stencil and as you can see first of all the the pads it's all kind of wavy. The laser cutter I used it's not very good it doesn't register positions very well and as you can see another issue and this is an issue you get with most like hobby grade laser cutters here is a package, it's a uh, T-saw package with 0.65 millimeter leads and instead of having a nice hole and then another hole uh, the laser cutter's beam, so to say, is just slightly too thick and it cut right through. Not saying that every single laser cutter is going to do this, but if you do it yourself, like here, this is a QFN and it just completely butchered it. Um, if you're going to do it yourself, you're probably going to get relatively poor results. So the uh, the recommended way forward is to get somebody with a more like professional grade, like a five thousand uh, dollar laser cutter, to do it for you. There are a couple of online services, and you can get a very nice mylar stencil. Now the nice thing about mylar stencils is that they are see-through, and you might say, duh. Uh, but the awesome thing about that is that if you have a PCB and you put your mylar stencil on it, you can align it just by sight like that, which is very convenient. However, these mylar stencils, obviously they're plastic, um, they will deform actually, especially all those thin features, and they will erode. 
uh, you can really only use this for prototyping, I find. Although, uh, to be fair, you can buy a bunch. You can buy like an A4 sheet of stencils and you can basically just duplicate the stencil 20 times for a couple bucks and uh, you'll get the excellent results for, I think, 100 or 200 boards easily. So it is useful for like small scale production if you have uh, a couple dozen of these to make. Uh, Mylar stencils are fine and they're very easy to register. What if you have a project like my Nano Hub, which uh, this is now the second revision, which is selling by the hundreds at the moment. It becomes uh, advantageous at that point to use stainless steel stencils. These have a very long uh, lifetime. Like Typical longevity for these is in the order of thousands of boards just for one stencil. As you can see, I am not very good at making stencils for stainless steel. Uh, stainless steel is obviously not see-through. Well, you can see through the holes, but uh, that's it pretty much. So uh, you really want to have a registration fiducials or something, or a registration jig. And also, I, I bought this from a Chinese vendor, and it is just ever so slightly crooked and ever so slightly not centered. So uh, I cannot use a, a default, uh, this is 15 by 15 centimeters, I cannot use a, a, a little frame that I built myself or something. However, you do get a very good longevity out of it and very good registration, uh, even better than Mylar because the stainless steel on these larger boards, if you use Mylar and you push across the uh, solder paste, the Mylar will actually stretch a bit, little bit and you will get uh, slight deformations at your uh, end boards. So uh, I find with larger boards, especially with these these uh, like 24 boards in one designs that are also 0.6 millimeters, so very flexible, I find that the Mylar stencils just uh, don't work for stuff like 0402s. Uh, you really need what I sh really should have done, and uh, unfortunately I don't have a, an example of that, I tried to find it, but I think I threw it away, <laughs> is to get these stainless steel solder paste stencils with a frame attached. And these are standard frames. These are frames for um, automated solder paste application. And those frames you can just put into like a special uh, paste uh, application machine and just put solder paste onto it. It's extremely fast and very convenient. And that is really what you use for machine assembly. So now you probably want to see how you actually do it. And well, obviously you uh, make sure that the PCB is exactly in the right spot. Uh, in this case, well, I don't have registration holes, so I had to do it uh, by sight. As you can see, every hole has little silvery uh, thing behind it. That's the pad. Basically just uh, did that and then taped it down with some Kapton. There's no special reason to use Kapton. It's just what I have laying around. And then we take a nice big scoop of solder paste, put it at each of the rows, and I can already tell this is not going to be enough for all the PCBs, but that's all right, because we'll be using this stencil for a bunch more. There we go. And then just for funsies, we're going to use this PCB to spread the uh, solder paste into the holes. Yeah, and there you can see it's already way too little in uh, on this side. So uh, what I usually do with these uh, large boards is I apply a second amount on the other side. Another yay much. Flip it around and go from this side. And then if I did everything correctly, uh, let me see how far can I zoom in. You can see that there is uh, a gray goo behind every every little opening. 
And there we go. These are the PCBs with solder paste applied. And if we zoom in again, as you can see here, here's a little SC70 LDO. And that actually has solder paste applied to it. Those are extremely tiny pads. But in other locations, they're slightly too much. And now comes the relatively uh, laborious task of taking the parts that I ordered from Farnell, applying them to the correct locations. And poof, all the components are on. Some people like to use a um, like a soldering oven for, for this, like have a little temperature controlled oven. Um, I don't really like them. <laughs> I uh, like using hot air, using a hot air gun, mostly because I use these very tiny components. Well, 0402 isn't that tiny, but y you have so much control when using hot air. You can individually heat up single boards and kind of adjust components when they tombstone or go crooked. Let's just try the one that's in focus first. Yeah, there it goes. Looks good. And there we go, it's now completely assembled and soldered. And the only thing to do now is to uh, touch it up slightly. I have to use a little bit of flux and just tap uh, the places where solder has bridged on a couple of these QFNs. It's uh, not nearly everywhere, but there are a couple of boards that have a few uh, bridges even. So that was a look at assembling PCBs using solder stencils and different types. Uh, I hope that was kind of informative, kind of a different video from normal, but uh, yeah, some next time, probably within a month or so, I'll uh, show you how assembly with the light placer, the pick and place machine goes. I'll also be using the uh, solder stencils and some more advanced techniques. So hope you liked it and see you next time.